Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the ovarian and menstrual cycles in women. And the most important thing to recognize is that if you look at a picture like this that shows the um, activity of the ovaries in the uterus over time, that the cycle is about, on average, 28 days long. Not every woman is going to uh, go through and be exactly perfect on 28 days, but that's about the average. It's also important to recognize that when we're looking at the events here, up here on the top, this is stuff that's going to be happening in the ovaries. Down at the bottom are events that are gonna happen in the uterus. We also want to recognize that for a woman's body after puberty, the entire job of the female reproductive system is to make a baby. So there is a lot of activity directed at trying to get an egg in play and giving that egg a nice, soft, safe place to implant so that the baby will grow. So if the woman isn't actually pregnant, the body will quickly decide, well, let's get, let's have another shot at it. Let's get rid of that old. Next month, we'll do it again and we'll do it better. First day of the ovarian and menstrual cycle is over here on the left. And what's happening in the uterus is that menstruation is going on. And menstruation basically means that the lining of the uterus, the endometrium, is being shed. There was no fertilization and implantation event last month. So we're gonna get rid of that tissue. We're gonna get it out of there and then clean everything out and make way for a possibility of a new chance this month. So you can see that there is blood and as you go through menstruation, days one, two, three, and so on, the amount of tissue that's in the uterus is declining. At the same time, you can see that the level of our follicle stimulating hormone is pretty high during this time. So the body has already decided the last attempt is didn't happen. Let's get another egg in play. So we're gonna use some follicle stimulating hormone. And follicle stimulating hormone is going to stimulate the maturation of a new follicle. So on day one, your level of follicle stimulating hormone is pretty high because we want a new follicle to come into play. The last one didn't work out. We're going, we're bleeding off all of the extra tissue and we want to put another egg in play. And you can follow this developing follicle through the different days, day one, day three, day five, and you can see how the follicle is getting bigger and bigger and eventually, the egg is going to be ejected from the ovary and we call that ovulation. So one of the things that happens is that the follicle itself is going to be producing estrogen. So this green line right here is your estrogen line. So as the follicle gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you can see that there's a big increase in the amount of estrogen that is circulating in the body. Now one of the things that estrogen actually does, I'm gonna use green for this, is it shuts down production of follicle stimulating hormone. So follicle stimulating hormone causes a follicle to mature. That mature follicle starts producing estrogen which then has a feedback mechanism to shut down follicle stimulating hormone. This is so that we make sure there's only one egg in play. We don't wanna have more than one egg because we're not really meant to have multiple births. It happens, but it's usually not as safe for the mother or the baby. So we're gonna shut down that follicle stimulating hormone so that we don't get maturation of more than one follicle. Not only does estrogen shut down follicle stimulating hormone, it encourages production of luteinizing hormone. So what's luteinizing hormone? We write that as LH. So luteinizing hormone is what's going to trigger ovulation. So as you get more and more estrogen, you're gonna get less and less follicle stimulating hormone, but you're gonna also at some point trigger a big surge 
of luteinizing hormone. And the luteinizing hormone is what's going to cause ovulation somewhere around day 14. So let's write down what estrogen is doing here. So estrogen is going to shut down follicle stimulating hormone. It's going to increase the amount of luteinizing hormone, which is then going to trigger ovulation. But the other thing that's important that estrogen is going to do in the uterus is it's going to thicken that endometrium. Do you see how after menstruation, the thickness of the endometrium is pretty thin down here? But as the levels of estrogen rise and as the days go through, this is going to get thicker. The endometrium is where a fertilized egg is going to implant. So we want it to have lots of blood and lots of nutrients for growth of the new baby. After ovulation, the oocyte is ejected from the ovary and the portion of the follicle left behind is called the corpus luteum. This corpus luteum begins to secrete progesterone. You can see how the red line at the bottom starts to increase. So we're going to have a lot of progesterone being produced. Progesterone is important because it maintains the lining. So progesterone being produced by the corpus luteum is going to cause this lining to stay nice and thick. Now the corpus luteum is also going to cause some production of estrogen. So we're going to continue to thicken it and the progesterone will make sure that the lining is not shed. Now here's about when fertilization would be happening. At some point, this corpus luteum starts to die off. It's no longer making as much progesterone and as much estrogen. And you can see the levels of those hormones falling there. Now what happens is if the egg itself has not been fertilized and is not growing, the corpus luteum will disintegrate and the result will be that those levels are gonna fall low enough that you're going to start losing the lining of the uterus. So the fact that the corpus luteum dies away eventually is going to cause menstruation. Because the level of estrogen, this one in green here, has fallen so sharply, remember one of the things that estrogen does is it shuts down follicle stimulating hormone. As we're coming closer to the end of the menstrual cycle, there's very little estrogen, which allows your follicle stimulating hormone to start to rise. At this point, we wrap around and we come back to day one of the cycle where follicle stimulating hormone is pretty high because estrogen is kind of low. Follicle stimulating hormone is going to cause the follicle to start to mature. That maturing follicle is going to produce estrogen. The estrogen is going to shut down more follicle stimulating hormone and cause an increase in luteinizing hormone, which is going to cause ovulation. The egg is going to move out of the ovary and into the uterine tube in the hopes of meeting her soulmate. The structure that the egg was in, the follicle, is going to turn into a corpus luteum which is going to produce a lot of progesterone, which will maintain the lining, and some estrogen, which is going to continue to thicken the endometrium. If no fertilization happens, this corpus luteum is going to disintegrate and die and stop making these hormones and menstruation will happen again. So what happens if fertilization actually does happen. So let's look at this. Same sort of thing. Up here we have our hormone levels. Down here we have what's going on in the ovary and in the uterus. Here's day one. We have menstruation. We have development of a mature follicle. The oocyte is released. 
corpus luteum is producing progesterone and some estrogen. However, because the egg has been fertilized and is going to implant somewhere around here, the fertilized egg is going to be producing human chorionic gonadotropin, which is what we test for in a pregnancy test. And that hormone is going to maintain the corpus luteum and keep it from disintegrating, which is going to keep the levels of progesterone and estrogen relatively high. So the lining of the uterus is not shed during menstruation. So you keep on going and the fertilized egg has a chance to grow and develop using the blood supply in the endometrium. The placenta will take over producing progesterone at about the eighth week of pregnancy. This is how birth control pills work. We actually are going to mimic the body's response to pregnancy. Most birth control pills contain either estrogen or progesterone or a little bit of both. And remember that estrogen is going to shut down the production of follicle stimulating hormone. Without follicle stimulating hormone, the ovary is not going to cause the maturation and ovulation of an oocyte. So in the first back to this page. In the first few weeks of the menstrual cycle, the body actually thinks it's pregnant. It has high levels of estrogen and progesterone, which it normally doesn't have if it's not pregnant. With these high levels of estrogen and progesterone, follicle stimulating hormone is not produced. And so no egg is released. No egg being released means the fertilization is not going to happen. At the very end of the cycle, there's usually a series of seven pills that don't have estrogen and progesterone in it. At that time, it mimics the loss of a pregnancy and the reduction in estrogen and progesterone levels will cause menstruation. One other thing to remember is that these phases have specific names. So for example, when the follicle is ripening and maturing, this is called the follicular phase. This is mostly happening during days one to 13. The luteal phase is in the second half of the ovarian cycle. And this is going on somewhere between days 15 to 28. And you can kind of remember these because the follicular phase, the follicle is maturing. And then in the luteal phase, the corpus luteum is responsible for maintaining the production of hormones that are going to keep the lining, the endometrium of the uterus, nice and thick. In between these two phases, you have ovulation, which happens again around day 14. That's it for today. See you in class.